Know What You Grow, sponsored by Ag Exchange Group, provider of CXN 360. Be in control of your market. The CXN 360 online marketplace puts you in control with a transparent and efficient marketplace that gives you real-time access to buyers. A little bit about myself. I'm Mike Witkowicz. I'm the Vice President of Business Development and Strategy with Ag Exchange Group. I've been with the organization since 2016 and really have been helping get the business uh, in business going and up and running. Um, prior to this, I did have uh, 12 years with Cargill and 10 years with Monsanto in roles all across the country. So I've I've had the huge opportunity within my working career to be able to um, work um, in. Sorry, I'm just going to share my screen. Work in the uh, in the capacities of. Uh, in operations and sales and get to see all the different crops grow. So here we go. So I'm going to bring it home. So why should we know what I grow? Well, I think Jeremy and Peter really heavily touched on it. So, you know, from Jeremy saying about managing your grain, segregating your crop and, and ending with the sample well, Peter really did a great job of explaining as to how to own those samples and that you know, I can speak to uh, the farms I've helped on and everything else that I, I wouldn't say we protected those samples like our pin. We would get pails and move them around and sometimes be lucky to remember which bin they came from and maybe have to go back and try grab some bin samples out. But as he shared, it's about owning those samples, splitting them and knowing it. So then you know what you grow. Once you have that detailed analysis, this is why it's important. So let's start. Grain marketing is not the way your father or grandfather did it. You know, I think back, my grandpa, he sold it to the local elevator down the road. He'd load up the wagon and, and go, or he bartered his production with neighbors. Maybe some neighbors didn't have enough feed, and he sold some of his grain for feed, and he got some animals back or, or anything that way. You know, and then our fathers, they sold it to the local elevators. They took the price. Maybe they look to a few local feed users, but it's very, very linear. In today's world, though, it is a spider web. So grain marketing in today's world, you've got everything is intertwined from buyers, processors, crushers, shippers, farms, end users, niche opportunities, and it all crosses over amongst each other. It isn't the linear world that we once lived in. So how do we how do we manage from that linear world to the to the spider web world? Well, I think it starts with right off the top. And I would say it's about planning. And I, and you know what through my working career, these are three quotes that we've always held true. If you don't know where you've been, you won't know where to go. And then failing to plan is planning to fail. And at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. So with a good plan and getting a line of sight, so we've done a great job in planning and all the, all the stuff that goes into planning and producing the crop, but it doesn't stop there. It's now, what do you do with that? And whether it's a formal plan with, uh, with multiple details to it, or if it's a plan that's written down more in bullet points or whether you have it in a Word document, make a plan at least it gives you guidance so then from your plan you're going to have multiple information sources that are going to help you on you know starting to consider the execution of the plan so your information sources can be your your guy or gal as people will refer to them those being your grain buyer maybe your marketing advisor or maybe um maybe a neighbor or two or a little group that you have together it could be from market reports that you receive, subscription ones. Or, you know, I know that our local paper has little market updates every week. Or you can find online tons of resources all there for free. There's government publications that are information sources. And then there's still more beyond that. Now, that can get overwhelming in itself. So try to narrow in your information sources to trusted ones. And you can use the others as points of direction, but don't get lost in the details either. Because sometimes you get lost in the details and then you lose sight of the plan and you don't execute on the plan. 
So we did spend a lot of time so far on this uh, webinar talking about the quality aspect of knowing what you grow. I want to just kind of, we, we had Jeremy sharing about what's kind of on the horizon. Um, Peter shared about the details. Um, he had some samples up there, but let's just look in the mirror. And we know that 2019 harvest proved to be challenging. There was quality issues across Western Canada. There was green count. You know, the, 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 the gentleman already touched on it. Falling number, you know, what the heck was this? It's not a CGC characteristic. All of a sudden, everybody's talking falling number. And then because of that long delayed harvest, toxins and stored grain were a potential. So that was, that was the perfect storm of, of issues. But what it did is it called the light that we spend a lot of time managing to grow the crop. We need to spend just as much time managing the crop as it's coming off and once it's off. So what did we see? As, you know, as Peter's example showed, Stuff that looked good scored low. Then we saw other stuff that looked bad scored so much better in protein and falling number. And the old correlation of grade and protein for falling number wasn't exactly what it always has been. And it was really, if, if that grain started the sprouting process, and even Jeremy had mentioned that the falling number is affected. So these are things we've got to keep in mind if we're going to enter into another harvest like we did last fall. So because I know that the rural roots audience, we can attract um, some more of the livestock side, you're not exempt from this. I grow my own feed. So what? Well, there's two big things, okay? What's the quality for your store feed? Did it go in wet? Did it go in warm? Because if it did, then you got potential toxin support, which is bad for your animals. So do you test it? If it goes in wet and warm, do you get it out and get your grain tested? On top of that, your stored feed may actually be worth something for milling and have some better prices. As an example, you know, like what Peter shared on that last detailed example, they all had a call grade of a feed. But as we saw, there was a feed. There was a two, and then there was a good one. And even that in itself, that takes a little bit more management, but it also returns revenue to your bottom line. So in that example that he had shared, you could actually sell that bottom one into milling and then buy feed stocks back. Now, realize that incurs a few extra costs with the transportation and handling, but we've seen spreads in the last year of 45 to $60 a ton between a number one and a feed. So I think for $60 a ton, it is really worth looking at how it matches to your plan and then executing on it. Oh, I missed a page. So what am I advocating? Well, I really think you have to focus on knowing what you grow. Just as the other gentleman shared, manage your fields, manage your harvest, manage your storage, manage your samples. So act accordingly from there. You may be leaving money on the table if you have quality product that could be in a mill. As well as for the toxins, make sure you keep your animals alive. Ensure you're testing to ensure there's no toxins in that stored grain. Now, how do you go about this? Because this is starting to be a lot more managing. So maximize your reach. Let's, you know, let's look at the buyers. Everyone has their... There are few buyers, they're guy or gal, you know, there's lots of benefit to those buyers. But just remember those local ones and the ones you've done with, this is still business. As I shared, it's not linear anymore. It's a spider web. And that spider web is a global marketplace with more and more competitors. So do you want to have access to them? Because to your, to your local guy or gal, you can only manage so many of those relationships. But there's technologies like CXN 360 that makes yourself more accessible, gives you time management, it gives you more information. And honestly, the technology that's here is changing the game for how you can manage your business. So let's just look at a few of the buyers and, and we can talk about this as to how this has emerged since the wheat board went away. There's more opportunities in processing. We've seen oat processors show up. We see canola crushers had built. 
Then there's companies in a growth segment. Um, there's JGL Commodities, AGT Foods. Newer players have come in and they're putting down a big asset footprint. G3, Grains Connect. Big companies that have previously avoided Canada are now buying in Canada. So companies like Schooler, they're one of the world's largest feed companies, but they're also one of the most efficient and effective container movers for moving grain. Grain Corp, Agricorp Processing, coming in and, and really looking at getting more of the pulses out of Western Canada. CHS out of the States, Columbia Grain out of the States. Everyone's now looking because they have access to the Canadian marketplace. Then there's just Eastern players that want access to the West. It was uh, the Le Coop Federé has, has rebranded with Solio Agriculture, and they're putting in a, a heck of a footprint. So there's all these buyers that are looking. And like I said, you can't effectively manage sitting at your desk on the phone, all these relationships. So you got to employ and deploy technology to help you maximize your revenues and maximize your reach. So. To wrap up my section, in conclusion, the marketplace has changed. We're no longer linear. We got a we got a spider web and a global marketplace. But in order to attack that, make a plan, identify who your information sources are, most of all, know what you have, and then sell according to what you have to maximize your revenues. And then use tools like the CXN 360 platform to reach more buyers effectively and efficiently.